The M26 Pershing was designed as an answer to the German Panther and Tiger tanks and was aimed as a replacement for the M4 Sherman in World War II. But because of delays and controversies in its development, it only came into service by the end of the war. Later it served in the Korean War and it started a completely new breed of tanks, the Pershing and Patton line, which stayed in service until the 1990s with various modernizations. So let's see what are the origins of the M26 and why was it so late to the war. At the breakout of World War II, the US Army was very unprepared in terms of tank force. They mostly had light tanks and not too many of those either. So in 1940 they started working on the M4 Sherman as their main medium tank. The Sherman was a good tank when it came into service in 1942. Its armor and 75mm gun worked very well against the smaller German and Italian tanks it first encountered in North Africa, but it had many drawbacks. The Sherman evolved from the M3 Lee tank, which itself evolved from the M2 light tanks, which was an evolution of the M1 combat car of the 1930s. The Sherman carried the obsolete foundation of these tanks, the big radial air-cooled engine which resulted in a high profile and the obsolete vertical volute spring suspension. Though many in the US Army thought the Sherman was good enough to win the war based on the first experiences, but history shows that by 1944 it was inferior to the newer German tanks and could only carry on because of its numerical superiority. Despite the optimism about the M4 Sherman when it came into service, the Ordnance Department almost immediately started to develop its successor. The specifications were the following, around 32 tons of weight, 75mm gun, 4 inch armor thickness and a top speed of 25 miles an hour. These specifications resulted in a series of prototype tanks and in the end together culminated in the M26 Pershing. The reason to develop a more modern tank for the US Army, despite the initial success of the M4, was that the Sherman's origin slid back to the 1930s to the M2 light tanks and it was a limited design from the start. Its hull had to be tall because of the radial air-cooled engines, its vertical volute spring or even the newer horizontal volute spring suspension was an old design. If you're interested why many tanks used aircraft engines in World War II, I have a separate video on that, see the link in the description. So because of the Sherman's limited design, the aim of the new project was to develop a much more modern successor. When the M4 entered service in spring 1942, the first prototype from this project was already in the mock-up stage. This first prototype, the T-20, was designed as a low silhouette compact hull tank, using a new Ford V8 engine instead of the radial engine used in the M4 Shermans. This engine was originally Ford's plan to build something similar to the British Rolls-Royce Merlin 12-cylinder engine, but it wasn't successful, so they converted it to a V8 and offered it as a tank engine to the Ordnance Department. Apart from the low silhouette, the biggest change of the T-20 was that it switched to a rear-mounted transmission and sprocket drive, as opposed to the Sherman's front sprocket drive. This eliminated the need for a drive shaft running to the front, lowering the profile even more. It used horizontal volute spring suspension similar to the M4 Sherman's, but later prototypes featured torsion bar suspension and that more modern design became the standard for US tanks. These prototypes featured the new M1A1 76mm gun, which thanks to the use of stronger materials had almost half the weight of the old 3-inch gun. The torquematic transmissions used on these models were very unreliable, so other options were explored. The next prototype, the T-22, used the same transmission as the M4 Sherman, but in the rear position. It wasn't much more reliable though than the T-20 models, so work on both the T-20 and 22 prototypes were cancelled in 1944. The T-23 prototype was similar to the T-22, but with a GE electrical transmission. This version was found to be much more reliable. 250 units were ordered in May 1943 though in the end they were never standardized as the army didn't want to build a whole new supply chain for these tanks and because the design still had some problems. If the turret on the T-23 looks familiar, that's because later this design was used on all 76mm Shermans. After these early prototypes, we get to the T-25 and T-26 versions and those will lead us to the final M-26. The T-25 was an evolution of the earlier prototypes and it was considered as a replacement for the Sherman as a new medium tank. It featured the new 90mm M3 gun, 76mm frontal armor and a 470 horsepower Ford V8 engine. The T26 was similar to the T25 except for its armor which was increased to 4 inch thickness. This added weight and put additional stress on the drivetrain but in the light of the appearance of the new bigger and stronger German tanks this seemed like the better compromise. The T26 E1 was the final prototype and the T26 E3 became the production model of this series and finally get the designation M26 in March 1944. 
The M26 was a big change in design compared to the Sherman, which was just the final evolution of the interval light tanks. It featured the new Ford V8 engine and rear transmission, giving it a low profile. The new torsion bar suspension gave it lower ground pressure than the Sherman's old HVSS system. It had better frontal armor, with a 4-inch plate sloped at 46 degrees and increased firepower with the new 90mm gun. The initial production of the M26 didn't go very smoothly, as it faced some opposition between the ranks. Even though the M26 was already accepted in March 1944, the actual production only started in November the same year, and the manufacturing process slowly gained momentum. Only 10 units were built in November, 32 in December, 17 in January 1945, and 132 in February. In total, around 2,200 units were built before the end of World War II. The delays in the M26 development and production, in most opinions coming down to one person, General Leslie McNair. He was a strong supporter of the early war US tank destroyer doctrine, which saw tanks as primarily infantry support asset, and used dedicated tank destroyers to fight other tanks. McNair also had a very strict view on introducing new weapons to the war, as they needed a whole new supply chain setup, and in his view this was unnecessary. Another cause for delay in tank development was the general view in 1942 and 1943 that the Sherman tank is more than a match to any German tank, as the German army mostly fielded Panzer III and IV versions. Many commanders were against the new 90mm gun as well, as they felt the 76mm was more than capable to do the job and it already had an existing supply chain. Though in summer 1944 there was actually a single prototype built mounting a T26 turret with a 90mm gun on a Sherman chassis, but it was abandoned. General McNair himself much favored the 76mm Sherman against the new T26 tanks. Even when the T26 E1 was about to be built, there was still arguing between Ordnance and the Army. The Army kept rejecting the 90mm gun, but finally the order to start the production was pushed through. Interesting that after so much arguing over the 90mm gun, later it was found out that even that fell short in firepower when meeting the new German Tiger II tanks and an experimental work was started with the longer, more powerful T-15 E1 gun. The tank with this new gun was designated T-26 E1-1. This gun had a much higher muzzle velocity at around 1140 meters and could penetrate the Tiger frontal armor at ranges beyond 3000 meters. Only a single unit was built with this gun and sent to Europe for field trials. A second pilot tank was built using the T-15 E2 gun, which used two-piece ammunition. This version was designated T-26 E4 and 25 units were ordered. The full production of the M26 was held back by the Army ground forces, as they wanted to see it field tested and proven before large-scale production begins. Finally an agreement was reached to deploy T-26 E3 tanks to Europe in November 1944. Just in time as in the Battle of the Bulge, the US forces faced a concentration of new German tanks and also the new King Tigers. These battles showed that the Shermans are seriously inefficient fighting these well-armored and better German tanks. The first batch of Pershings arrived in Antwerp in January 1945 and were assigned to the 1st Army, where they were split between two armored divisions, the 3rd and the 9th. By the end of the war, 310 units were shipped to Europe. The first combat action of the Pershings happened on 25th of February 1945. The tank named Fireball was seriously damaged on the 26th when a concealed Tiger tank managed to shoot it three times. One of the shells penetrated the turret and killed the gunner and loader, but Fireball managed to back off from the fight, it was repaired and returned to service two weeks later. On 6th of March the famous Cologne tank duel took place as the 3rd Armored Division entered the city. Near the cathedral a Panther tank was waiting in ambush and knocked out an advancing Sherman. The nearby T26 E3 was called in to deal with it. They managed to get to the side of the Panther and shoot it before it turned its gun on them. All three of their shells penetrated the Panther, which burst into flames. Pershings played a role in taking the Ludendorff bridge as well, supporting the infantry. They couldn't cross the damaged bridge with their divisions because of their weight. Instead, they had to wait a few days to cross the river on barges. The single T26 E1-1, the so-called Super Pershing that was sent to Europe, participated in the combat actions too. As the unit commander was afraid to lose the unique tank, it was field modified with additional armor. 38mm armor plates were welded on the front of the hull, and an 80mm thick plate coming from a knocked out panther was welded on the mantlet. According to the records, this Pershing variant had 3 or 4 German tank kills over the last month of the war. An interesting and not well known fact is that the M26 Pershings came close to participate in the Pacific in the Battle of Okinawa. As the fierce fighting on the island claimed many Shermans, a decision was made to ship M26 tanks there. Sadly, due to various delays, they only arrived in August, after the battle was over. 
in Europe as part of the occupying force in Germany, the M26 tank stayed in service until they were replaced by the new M47 patterns in 1952. After their replacement, more than 400 Pershings were given to the Belgian army. France and Italy also received numerous M26 Pershings. France later replaced them, but Italy kept the M26 in service until 1963. In the Far East, the breakout of the Korean War found the US forces fairly ill-equipped, as at first they only fielded M24 Chaffees, later mixed units featuring M26 Pershings and M4A3 Shermans. The M24 and the Shermans found to be ineffective against the North Korean T-34 tanks, but the Pershings with the 90mm gun fed very well. They didn't participate in the war too long though, as in 1951 they were replaced by the new M46, as the M26's lack of mobility was very apparent in the mountain areas of Korea. The M46 featured a new 800 horsepower Continental engine, which was a big improvement over the 500 horsepower engine of the M26. The M26 Pershing, designed in World War II as a replacement for the Shermans, started a whole new tank line, the Patterns, with the M46, M47, M48 and M60 tanks. The last few M60 tanks, carrying its legacy, were retired in the 1990s. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.